Hey everyone, so in today's video, I'm going to show you how we can use the Pirate MIDI Bridge 6. I nearly said Pirate Bridge then, I keep saying that. Pirate MIDI Bridge 6. I'm going to show you how we can use it as a set navigator. So I've gone over this previously, but I'm going to show you in depth how to actually do it. So the MIDI is coming out of that and it's going into the Octatrack and then it's going back out of the Octatrack through the through and getting distributed to other machines using Kenton through boxes. But with the set navigator, what I could do is send program change message, and that's normally just going to the Octatrack, and then the program change messages gets fed from the Octatrack into the other machines. But because I'm sending it into the input and then it's going to through, that message also gets sent to the other boxes, and I kind of like it that way because it means that the program change message goes to these three boxes individually. It means there's no daisy chaining of the program change message like I used to. Before, I used to have this issue sometimes where I changed the pattern on here and the syntax would lag behind and it wouldn't catch up. Using this, I'm able to distribute them equally and it seems to work a lot better. So yeah, that's how we've got it set up. And then what I've done is you can see on here, this is just one I've done before. You've got the track name in the middle, the bank number. If I use the MIDI Fight Twister to scroll up and down the banks, you can either do it this way or I can set up a MIDI CC to change that externally, which is much nicer doing it like this. You can see I can go through my songs like this. And then if we go to, like, say, track one, you can see that we have got um, intro, main, break, outro. I'll give you a quick demonstration. I'm just going to hit that one first. Press play. So you can hear that this is playing now. Then if I press main, on time, when the sequence ends, it changes to the next one. Now we're going to the break. And I can do a build up. And you can go through like that. But the cool thing about this is, is that I've also set up um, switch groups as well. So when I switch intro, all of the other lights turn off. Switch this one, it turns the other lights off. So I always know where I am within a set. If I want to go to a new song, then I press the next bank. And then I choose, um, they all need put into the left. I'm still programming this, but they need to change to them ones. That's the way I'm going to do it now on these four. And then if I want to extend the song, I can add more patterns on the other two foot switches. But those two foot switches have been used for fins. Like on this track, if I go to this one, I can press that. And it changes a load of parameters in Ableton on the machines to get this rectify sound. And also turns the kicks off. So yeah, that's pretty much how it works. You can see I've also started putting P next to them. So P um, intro, P main, that's just pre uh, pattern, sorry. Pattern intro, pattern main, pattern break, pattern outro. And then that just differentiates it from these ones. You can also color code stuff as well. It's really cool stuff. There's a lot more to this and we'll go into it over upcoming videos. Um, if you're interested in purchasing one of these, I'll put an affiliate link below. If you purchase through their main site using my affiliate link, obviously I get a cut of the sales, which is very handy for me to help keep this channel running and i never promote products unless i absolutely love them and as you can see this is stuck onto my board it's a very integral part of my life setup i absolutely love this fin and it keeps getting better because the guys behind it i think there's two guys behind the company and they're just constantly pushing updates out they've got a closed beta group and an open beta group on discord and it just seems like every week there's something new happening. So they recently just added like keystrokes as well. So you can actually send keystrokes to a computer, which is kind of impressive, really. There's a lot you can do with this. The other cool thing is the flexi inputs, which can be used for various things. You can also double these up with um, an expander. And I'm using it for expression sliders. So these use audio cables. And I can basically, as you see, I turn them up, turns these up. And we'll talk about that in another video and how to program them. They're basically performance macros for me, and they're going into the flexi inputs. And then you've also got connectivity as well for USB, MIDI in, MIDI out, etc. Really cool stuff. And then let's take a look at the, the app for it. So if I use Chrome, which I recommend, um, I think I'm still using the dev version because I think I'm still on a beta. I'm on the latest beta. Uh, let me just wait for this to load. So if we go history, um, I think it might be that one. So yeah, you can see dev web there. Right, okay. 
So um, import from device. Then you pair it up, bridge six. This is this is always connected to my computer. And obviously, because this is an hybrid rig, this will always be connected to a computer or a laptop. Same as everything else, which is why it's really useful the way I've got all this all set up now. I can go in and deeply edit stuff. So you can see there we're on the current bank. But what we're going to do in this session is I'm going to basically set up another one for, I think it's number eight. So let me just, uh, on the bridge six, I'm just gonna go to number eight. Yeah, so in a previous video, we made this track. And we actually, these are all set up as a template. So let's just see if that works. That's the break. Let me just go to Ableton as well and just make sure on the right. Yes, yeah, so that's a, a break build up. Let's pick this one. So yeah, the goal of this session is that we're going to basically um, program this so that it corresponds to what I've got going on. These are templates that I've already set up. So you can see all the way up to 32, because that's how many songs I can fit on my current system in a project with the way that I've got it set up. So obviously the syntax and the digitax have eight banks and each of the eight banks has 16 patterns, but I want to allocate four patterns. I've always done this, four patterns to each of the banks so that's sorry four patterns to each son so that's four sons in a bank and that's four patterns per son that's the way that i like to work it and that gives me say like an intro a main a break and an outro so to speak and then i can always extend it if i want so yeah i've already set these up as templates with the midi cc's already mapped and it's really easy to do with the app because what you do is you just go copy and then you can paste it on a new bank and you can rename that and stuff as well but the cool thing about the bridge six is that each of these can be different. So if we go to eight now, we can label this a track name. So I've got a working track name at the moment. It's not very good. I'm going to call it something else, but we'll call it captain. And then it's actually one, two, three BPM, this one. So that's the first part of it. And then these are already mapped. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to label them to what they are in the song. So we've got main, we've got breakdown we've got um build and then we've got we'll just call this bridge because it's like an alternate version of the main part and then if we can fit it on i don't know how many characters you get i can't remember but no we can't put a p there but that's fine um and then this one p put a p there as well just to let me know it's a pattern um and then these two can be reserved for something else or I can extend the arrangement if I want and add some more patterns. So for them, in another video, what we'll do, because I haven't done this for this track yet. I only just made this track yesterday on a video. Um, but this video might go out a little bit later. But we'll do another video where we uh, map the expression sliders and I'll do mappings for the expression sliders. And we'll also create like maybe one or two foot switches as well to do some different scene effects changes. So let's take a look next at the colors, right? Because I always color code stuff. So yellow for me is intro in Ableton anyway. So I'm trying to match what I do in Ableton usually. Breakdown, usually use like a purple or a pink. Go for a pink for, a... I am actually colorblind, so I'm gonna find this quite hard. But um, it hasn't got, yeah, so we'll use that one and then we'll use purple as well. I don't even know if that is, I think, is that red? I'm confused. Yeah, I am colorblind, like pinks, browns, purples, it gets a bit confusing for me. But you can actually add custom colors, which I might do at some point. I think you put hex codes in. And you can change them on a global level. So I'll start to add my own colors if I need to. So we'll use that one anyway, um, which is probably wrong. It's probably red or something. And then um, this one is already purple. And then for the bridge, what we'll do is we'll just use an alternative color. So we'll use like a green. Um, so they're color coded now. And then what I'm going to do also is take a look at the foot switch. Switch messages. So these are already set up. So I don't really need to redo them, but I'll take you through anywhere how to set one up, right? So let me just remember the, the program change. So it's, it's channel 16, 28. Let me, instead of deleting actually, I'll just put a new one exactly the same. So you've got a choice on the bottom. You've got keystroke, uh, device library, which I never use, but it's pretty cool. I should maybe use this because I'm sure they've added, let's go synthesizers, electron. What have they got in here? Alt track Mac 2. That could be quite handy. 
So you can go in there. Oh, I should use this. This is great. Don't have to really go into the manual with this, which is really handy. Uh, Digitax 2 needs to be in, updated there, but you can see Digitax, and then you can see we've got all of the different CC parameters. Very, very handy stuff. They've got almost everything in there, so I'm sure Digitax 2 will come soon. But yeah, let's look at Orchestrack. So Orchestrack, I could go in there and say, like, affects one parameter. And then what you have to do, actually, though, is make sure you choose the right channel. So on, on each Electron device, not to go into it too much, but each track will have its own its own MIDI channel. So if I go, like, After Touch, let's, nah, let's go choose a different one. Uh, let's go MIDI track. No, we won't do that one either. Let's go. What's quite handy, actually, though, is it's changing all of the other settings depending on what you choose. Um, let's choose... Where was one I just had? Let's use Amp Parameter 3, right? So we're on Amp Parameter 3. Then you've got to choose a channel. These are all labeled already, you see. So normally on a on an Electron device, these will be like 1 to 8 for the Octa track. So that like MIDI channel 1 will be like track 1. MIDI channel 2 will be track 2. On the Digitats, they go now go up to 16 for the uh, Digitats 2. So like tracks 1 to 16 will be on different MIDI channels which is a bit problematic for me because as you can see, each of my machines has got its own MIDI channel. So I have to go into Electrons and disable track MIDI channels or like disable CC incoming and stuff like that. So you need to kind of work it for your system. But yeah, you can obviously select your channel. Like actually for the Octa track, I would choose the Octa track channel if I'm doing like global stuff. But anyway, let's move on from that. So let's cancel that off. And the other one is keystrokes. I've not really played around with this yet, but you can see all these mad keystrokes that you can send to the computer can send free at the same time also i got told as well with an update you can actually like stagger messages as well i need to look into that but you can basically stagger them in sequence which is quite cool so imagine like one foot switch could stagger keystrokes so you could press a foot switch on here and it could do like um, an automation of different things in ableton maybe you could set one up while you're doing arrangement where it like does a copy paste moves some, uh, presses something else. Like you do like multiple keystrokes from one foot switch. Well, that's pretty interesting. But what we're going to do is MIDI and we're going to set up a program change message. So what you do is you go MIDI, you click down here, you can see you've got all these, note poly pressure, program change, control change. Control change is your CC message, which I normally use. Program change, 16 is always my program change channel. Also worth noting as well, you can label stuff, which is really handy. I'll show you how to do that in a second. So the program number, I can't remember what, remember what it was now. So it's 28. So let me just do that again. Program change. You go 28 and then you go 16 from a program change channel. Then you get to decide where it's going out. So I turn the flex ports off and I want this to go out over DIN 5. But what's handy is when you come to do CCs, you can choose a channel. So let's say if we choose like Twister, Ableton, choose a CC number, and then the value, so what you want the maximum value to be. Actually, no, because it's a foot switch, this is the value it sends out. So when you press the foot switch down, do you want it to be like 75 or whatever? Um, if it's a expression slider, this is obviously, you manipulate 0 to 1 to 7 using the slider. So then you decide that you want it to go just out of USB, or maybe you want to also send that out of the MIDI part as well. That's pretty much it, and you can list up to eight on a press and then you've also got release as well um this is handy when we do the scene foot switch where you press a foot switch when you press it on it has a set list i'll show you that now actually let's go to this one so that rectify one there let's take a look at that so when we toggle on which is you've got press basically and then you've got toggle toggle means that when you switch it it'll be on and then when you toggle it off it'll be off a press is just basically like a press and that's it and a release so with the toggle on uh, when we switch on it it changes all of these and they're the values and then when we switch it back off again it resets them to its original state which are these values so you can add up to 16 messages of them which is very intense and then you've also got some extra stuff like you can do hold double press hold release secondary toggles there's loads of extra stuff i haven't gone into yet so let's go back to programming this one. So yeah, imagine we've done all of them now. So they correspond to the different program change messages. So we've got 28. So if we go to bank two, it will be pattern 13. And then the breakdown is pattern 14. And that corresponds to 29. 
and then we'll have 30 and then we'll have 31 and so on so that's how i would set that up and then if we go to the bank settings let's just have a quick look through these yeah you can actually send midi clock out as well uh bank messages you can actually send a message out whenever you switch the bank which is pretty cool expression sliders we'll do that next time so the other thing i want to talk about actually is switch groups so to set switch groups up you can create all these different groups with many switches the reason why it goes higher on the switches as well is because you can actually link up more than one uh, bridge device they've got a bridge four and a bridge six so i could use a flexi port and have 12 switches <laughs> instead of uh, six which is absolutely nuts and then obviously that expands your flexi inputs as well so for now i'm just going to use one but i'm a bit of a geek so i'll probably end up wanting to expand it at some point so the way this works is you can see that i've got those four switches then you can add a switch like this and you can see that what i've done is i've chosen a switch like one and then i set all of them to primary which means that they overtake all of the other switches and leave this on transmit and receive and then it responds to um oh yeah respond to on so when another switch is uh switched on the response of this switch will be to switch off if that makes sense so you do that for all of them then if we go to the machines that means that when i press one of these the other ones switch off so they're all listening to each other basically so then the way you would do this now now we've set that up with the changes that we've made we go center device you can see it sends it over and then if we look at the Pirate Bridge 6, once it's finished, you can see all my changes have been made there. I've now labeled and color coded those. So in the next video, when we look at um, expression sliders and foot switches, we'll look at sending MIDI from these two foot switches and these two sliders to do some build up performance macro stuff. So let's test these now. If I press that, I should be on the main uh, loop. <laughs> let's have a little jam, see if it works. Right down. Next one. Ah, I'm in a habit of doing that. Right. Sorry. We're on the we're on the breakdown. Should have used this. Apologies. Sometimes, but then it, again, that brings me on something. This is cool, but I can also override it if I want. Like, that's just that top level. And it's the same with most of the stuff in this setup. If I make a mistake, like using the pattern on here to change everything else, this still will change the, the patterns on the other machines as well. So it kind of, it's top down, it's filtered. And it's the same with the expression sliders. These will control multiple parameters, but I can always use like the PC4 to change individual track parameters as well. Or I can go in and change stuff as well. These are just like top level um, fins and they will like override each other if that makes sense. So yeah, we're on the break now. Let's switch over to this one. Go back to the main bit in a second.
you get the idea. So yeah, really cool stuff. Like I said, I can go through and switch to any son I want. And I'll do this. In, I've done this in other videos already, I think, but we'll go over it again in more detail of how to program the Octrack. But basically on channel eight, I can create a loop and then I can switch to another pattern using the Pirate Bridge MIDI 6. Like let's say I want to go to Son 1. I can then switch to that while the loop is playing on deck B in Ableton from the Ops track, which is on track 8. Basically, I record a loop on that. Using the MIDI Fight Twister, I can then mix between deck A and deck B and add some effects and, and mix them with the EQs and stuff. So this is a really cool way of working with the MIDI Fight Twister as my DJM mixer and uh, the Octa track kicking out a deck A and deck B along with this it feels i mean it's not like a cdj and a djm but that's why i did this to bring that functionality into um, a once dollar setup so now it's obviously a hybrid setup but it's just the ability to be able to like scroll through so quickly just as you would on like a cdj obviously not the same but you could argue it's even better really because it's much more simple cdj sometimes gets a bit annoying when you're scrolling through this i could kind of know where stuff is and also you've got a set list which we'll go into in another video basically you've got a set list and you can see this one's set one i don't even know oh there we go set two so there's set two set four set seven yeah these need to be programmed but basically you can create any sets you want and you can rename them and you can reorganize all of your banks in your set so you can see one two three four five six seven eight that's the running order and i think you can go down the set like this and choose different tracks if you want but when you come out of the set list what will happen is when you change your banks it will go from dubby to bank 11 to bank 12 to bank 99 to bank 48 to bank 3 whichever order you put them in and then you can label them so let's say if we call this one like bear guy like maybe you're playing a bear guy set you call it bear guy the next one Maybe it's a festival set in the day. So you come up with a bit of a different playlist with some maybe some lighter stuff or whatever. Um, but you're able to do that. My goal with this is maybe to set it up where I kind of group stuff into labels. So maybe like set one will be like my main set from start to finish. But then I'll create another set which is like techno, another set which is electro, another set which is like dubby or jungle. And then what I'm able to do is like go on little excursions um, as I switch stuff up because I do like to jump back and forth between electro and techno as an example so that's something that I could do with that it gives me a bit more flexibility with a live set because as most of you know from working with the electron boxes you kind of lay stuff out in a linear way or you create patterns that are all over the place and then what you have to do is you have to go into the projects on all of them change the project to a new live set project then copy over all of your banks presets kits um onto the new project and it's tedious because you've got to keep going back and forth and there's loads of accidents that happen and then you kind of lay your set out in a certain way then a month later you want to change your setup again you've got to go through that whole process again rearranging stuff creating a new project and it just takes forever to do whereas with this i can basically make tracks however i please on here in any order as an example this one that we was just playing a minute ago let me just go back to that this is one two three but the pattern before it is 140 and then i think the other one before it is 142 so there's no order of bpms and progression in this project and i'm not really bothered about that because i can always go in and reorganize them in a set so yeah we'll do that in another video so maybe in the next video we'll take a look at expression sliders then we'll do foot switches and then we'll do set list once i've kind of worked that out and i'm sure there'll be other cool stuff that comes up as well as i start to program this uh, live rig more deeply so if you're interested in doing any courses with me i have got some mastery courses out for the syntax the hydrosyn the typhon it might be out by now because since filming this but we've got digitats 2 mastery course and digitat 1 mastery course coming up and then also probably an Oxtrack one which i've been putting off quite a while because it's such a deep instrument but i'm looking forward to doing that because it'll push me to learn the Oxtrack on an even deeper level and as most of you know through my courses i really go deep and try and squeeze the hell out of these machines to get the most out of them so yeah sign up below if you're interested in the mastery courses i'll put a link probably for the digitats 2 mastery sign up because i do pre-sales where it goes out before public release so you get early access to that 
if it's not already out already. And then I also run discounts as well, so it's always worth signing up to my mailing list. I've also got a Patreon, which I'll chuck stuff up on there as well, such as diagrams for the live set, Ableton racks, projects, templates, samples, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, my name's James Always from Xackers, and I'll see you next week.